Yeah, can't be waiting long. Come on. There we are. I didn't think I was going to make it. George Kaplan, how are you, my friend? Okay, can everybody hear me? My brain is fried, man. My brain is fried. Um, I can't hear me, which is good. Because, maybe because I got the sound muted. Because, there we go. Now where's this Google Hangouts thing? There. Fried brain. <laughs> you can hear me again, Georgie Borgie. Pudding and pie. There we are. I'm going to pop this chat up. Don't know what I'm going to talk about. Whiskey Pilgrim, you are out of bed. It is late. Bourbon Professor, how are you? Pop out the chat. Now I can see the chat. I don't need to see me. Well, where are you, my friend? Somebody let Richie know that I am alive. Thank you for coming in, George. I am alive, we will say here. So, how's everybody been doing? Good? Good, I hope. I'm going to pour a dram here. Oh, just work, man. My first day out of this shutdown, they blew up a furnace. Thanks, Richie. Hey, Richie, there you go. Whiskey shenanigans, what's up? I'm pouring a 25-year-old whiskey. It is an independent. It is half the price of the distillery edition. It is a Glen Ellichy, and it is beautiful. And it's under $200 Canadian at one of my favorite liquor stores here, the Cake and Cork. I shared this recently with Sean Kincaid. And I think this is as good, if not better, than their distillery edition, which is over 450 bucks. Cheers, everybody. Glad to see you guys here. Whiskey Pilgrim, you mustn't ever sleep. Anyway. Bourbon Professor, I should open up a bourbon. That's what I should do too, eh? Okay, Richie. Paying attention. Here's a bottle of Balcones. Balcones, the rumble. It's actually not a whiskey. It is a spirit. This is from 2015. If you haven't seen it, a Texas wildflower honey. Turbinado Sugar and Mission Fig Spirit. Uh, you're, wor you're as worked as I am. Yes, buddy. You should see the work. I can't even go on about it. It's just amazing. <coughs> and I appreciate you guys checking in on me. It's gracious of you. Very gracious. But, man, has there ever been some guys having help out there, eh? Or having help, having fun. I think I can get into this. Time for a sip, gentlemen. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. What do we got going on here? Today, there's a unit, a security system at this place I'm working at called Thor, which I kind of forget. I don't know what the acronym stands for, but it's for it measures electricity in the air. And lets them know when there's lightning coming. And uh, this will be the second day we got called away from the unit twice. I wasn't in the unit. I was sitting behind a computer all day long trying to get things done. Everybody decided to come over to my office right at the end of the day. So tomorrow I have all this timesheet stuff to get done. And I'm not even the timekeeper, man. Anyway, 
it is how we afford the drams although to be honest i think maybe i need to slow down what do you guys think anybody ever thought i need to slow down and i am getting very unhealthy and out of shape gentlemen just thought that would you know cover that right now before one of the jabronis comes on and says something 12 and a half hour shifts, 12 and a half hour, 13 hour shifts, and then I have to drive home, which is 45 minutes to an hour, depending on traffic, and that's two work and back. Luna have a new make tonight. New make? That would be nice. I have a Luna Haven that is going to be exclusive to us. And I can't remember where I put it, but it, it, oh, pardon me, it is not a Buna Haben. Although I was given a very nice Buna Haben and invited to Buna Haben by the Canadian ambassador, Mike uh, Bob Roberis. Hey, Mash and Drum, how you doing, buddy? Hope you've been doing well. You're slowing down to 52. I'm 51 this month. My pleasure, buddy. Thank you for asking. I hope you and all the other guys are doing very well. I've been away a long time. Uh, work is demanding. And I'm lazy. I've been getting lazier. Time to make a change, I know. The whiskey behind me is not going anywhere, so we still got to talk about it. I have some new bottles. I have lots of things I should be telling you guys about to be very thankful about, actually. Um, here's one. Actually, I was given this. It is the Mac McKinley's Blended Whiskey. Uh, faithful recreation of a 1907 whiskey and its presentation. And I was just in there, and the manager of the store said, you want one? Sure, I said. I'm interested, and he had it here. You can have it. This is a 47.3. Right? It is good stuff. Moe's is in. Hey, is Moe's in? Good evening, Moe's. Hmm. Another little sip here. I need to take time, you betcha. I've got so many. Why is Moe's... Why do I have to show Moe's comment? Like, why is everybody not... Good evening, Moe's. How you doing, buddy? Um, every time somebody types something after Moe's, it, it asks me if I'm a lot, if, if it's okay to show it. Anyway, that is a very unique bottle. I should open it, take it out of this. The bottle... The, ca the case is probably worth more. Open here. It's it's actually got magnets in this cardboard. And I don't want to drop it because I'm not really... Uh, I tell you something. I'm trying to set up for an impromptu. is just as hard work as just setting up for a real thing. Anyway, nice magnets. Clicks in. Comes out of the straw skirt. There's a big fancy thing written in here. Plan of the hut used by the Shackleton ex Expedition, which is what this is all about. Rare old Highland malt. You can hear the magnet. Click. And it comes in a grass skirt. I don't know why, but it does. Got some fancy logo on the bottom. And then inside, it's just kind of a plain bottle, gentlemen. But they were selling this for $200. Give or take a few bucks. $200. And the new one that's come out is 80 bucks, 70 something, 70 to 80 bucks. So, and I think it's the same juice. Anyway, but hey, I am thankful that the store gave this to me. They just handed it to me. He said, Here, have her. You got to be kidding me. So, there's a reason that it was probably taken off the shelf. Not that there's anything wrong with the bottle, but I don't think anybody's buying it at that price right keep telling myself you go you should bourbon professor why not what's the worst gonna happen you can walk down the street and be judged by people 
Yes, it is a nice raffy kind of bottle. It's a nice looking package. I mean, I would be interested in it, but I never heard anything about it. I couldn't justify the price for a blend. <laughs> and I spend too much money on whiskey. Um, the other thing, what else did I get that I am very thankful to, for to Graham Usher? And I only have a little bit left as he gave me this bottle of Glen Farkless. For, imported by Saza, Sazerac Company Incorporated, but it is from the single cask nation, although they have some fun on here and called a double cask. No one, well, bourbon professor, I actually don't know much about you. Let's click on this and see what we can find out. Let's find out, guys. Who knows bourbon professor in here? I seen him. Two reviews, two videos. There you go. I'm already subscribed, so try a live, pick a time, stick to it, follow some of the YouTube guys that tell us what to do, right? I am not a good example, man. I've been doing this for just over a year now, and uh, <laughs> it is a lot of work. Credit to all the guys that have been growing successful in here, right? Glenn Farkless is very good. So... I have been contacted, and I will be doing an interview. It is not readily available in Canada, no. There's only 562 bottles of this. 59.5% beautiful. This is a beautiful one. It's only nine years old uh, from two casks. Both of them, one is a first fill, Oloroso, and the second is a, a second fill. If you go live, they will come. Yeah, just got to let them get to know you. Bourbon professor, how about uh, one day I'll invite you on my show. We'll chat for a bit, see if we have any collaboration abilities and see if we enjoy each other. As far as I, I don't, I don't really know you that well. You could be a donkey as far as I know, right? Or you might be the greatest guy I ever met. But you like whiskey, so find me on... Um, Instagram and send me a direct message. And that's how it all starts. That's how I, somebody talked me into doing this. That's all it is. But it's hard work. It's time consuming. The physical part of it's not that hard. Right? Ass mash and drum. Jason's been doing a phenomenal job and he's one of the newer guys at it, right? So he's just blowing by most people. But he did his homework. What am I missing? Sazerac. They really have a lot of things going on. Yes, they do. What else am I thankful for? Well, I was at a Drams for Fams fundraiser. Hey, Donner Press, how you doing? And uh, the fundraiser, I like, I don't care to do money donating or whatever to certain things. Cancer, all that stuff. Yes, I mean, you know, we would all love a cure for cancer. But I don't think that the money is used wisely um but the food bank and the way the guys from the edmonton whiskey club do it and how they've expanded it to everybody throughout the world mostly north america and how well it has done for the food banks you know for a little bit of effort it has done well so they had two events going on at the same time at edmonton and um, at the end of the tasting, they you bought tickets, and they gave away the leftover heels. This was over half full when I got it, and my card, my card, I couldn't believe I was the first one called. I never win anything. Anyway, it was called, and it was this, the most coveted one out of the whole bunch, guys. An Ardbag Alligator Committee Release, and under underlying letters here, it says First Edition. So if I get my act together, I think if you see behind me here, I have a package of sample bottles 
on our press is buying whiskey online. Anyway, what I think I'll do is we'll bottle this up and we will send out samples. Is this an old wow, George? I, I do have quite a bit of art bags, but this is a first or for discussion, it says, exclusive committee release. 51.2% ABV, imported by Moet Hennessy. I ended up having so many moochers at this tasting that it's now just under half a bottle. So I should have packed up and left. And then my card was called a second time, and there was something there that I wanted to grab, which I cannot recall right now. But I grabbed this instead. And that's a pretty good size. The tickets were worth it. Right? This is from Unwind. Unwind has a, a whiskey delivering service now called the Whiskey Drop. I don't think it's going to be very good for anywhere out of Canada, but uh, that's what they're doing now. Alligator was my first art bag. Love before I could even spell art bag. You could you spell alligator? Does it have a special finish? Oh, yeah, peat and more peat. Ferocious alligator charring of new American white oaks has created a spicy dark dram of hidden depths within lurk, deep, tarry, coffee, barbecue, sizzle, and sooty aromas. These are heels, buddy. Yeah, these are heels. They, they, but they were opened up that day, and it, it's been three weeks at the most so they've been aerated nicely next time i'll read those notes really close to the mic okay the number four alligator char and then one other one i'm helpful or thankful to get gentlemen is uh irish single malt and i know nothing about it i, I really didn't Distilled by Pete Mosley. You've never seen an I've never seen an alligator here, so it's uh, it's an old release. It's been around for a long time. This is a bottle of Dingle Batch Three. I know you don't need this mic this close, but there's just something about talking close into the mic that I like. Jason Fisk, how you doing? So I have a bottle of Dingle. Dingle comes in a nice bottle, actually. Hey. It's a solid bottle, this. Great neck. Great little picture on the back. The Sleeping Giant, it's called, on the back. And uh, fairly difficult to get her. Dingle, single malt. I hear nothing but good things about it. I have not had a chance to open it. Nice, Dingle. I think I'll have it make, get a dog and I'll call him Dingle. A-N-G-O Dingle was his name. Oh, sounds like a radio show. Mike, how you been anyway, buddy? Thank you for saying good morning to me every day, almost every day on my way to work. Everybody knows I like independent bottlers. This here is what I'm drinking right now. It's a 25-year-old Glen Ellichi. And it is beautiful. And it is $189 compared to the release, the distillery release, 25-year-old, which is around $450 here, $425, $450. Thank you for asking, George. My dad is doing much better. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Jiggle my wet. Tight, delicious, tight, brown, poof hole. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that, buddy. You're awesome. Unnecessary, but you're awesome. Hmm, who should be my moderator? Oh, no, that's not right. Hmm, I know a good moderator. I know that there are people out there because I have been a little bit of a cranky guy and I think I'm going to get some not-so-friendly people in here. 
And that's the only way. They can't say it to your face. So if you want to, tell me who you are. Come on out and uh, let's talk. You donkey. I do. And I got one. Your dad's 86, still going strong. That's good, buddy. Um, do I have a favorite independent bottle? Well, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Um, and I just bought a bottle of Longmorn, a 13-year-old Longmorn. It's, to me, it was phenomenal. Reminded me of that el elusive 16-year-old uh, that everybody keeps finding. Um, I like Duncan Taylor. My first time ever going to a master class was with a gentleman named Peter Curry. And he is a, uh, um, a very knowledgeable man. And what I liked about doing his master class was he debunked a lot of the marketing mythology or for the lack of a better word. Um, And it, it just opened my eyes to things, you know. I mean, I if you can see above my head, there's quite a few Brook Laddies up there. Um, and he, I mean, he just picked them out of the air. It didn't He wasn't picking on them particularly. They, uh, but he's like, you know, they talk about how it was aged by the sea and the salt water and all this stuff. And he's like, yeah, in a warehouse down by the train station next to all the diesel motors. You know, you're like, yeah, man, I can see that happening. And I did. When I was on my trip to Scotland in October, I'm in a room and everyone's going on about how they can smell the peat. We're in the room where the peat is burnt, right? In a very old distillery. And all I could smell was hydraulic fluid because we were standing right where the motor is that pumps the fan, operates the fan. And that's what I smelled. Maybe it's because of the industries I work in. Who knows, right? But that's what I got. It's not to say that they don't put efforts into it and so forth, but, you know, come on, guys. It's just whiskey, right? The, the fact that somebody had to pay attention to a barrel or a cask for eight years or 80 years, that that's something I really like to meet the people that do the work, you know? So, yeah, you have seen, it seems way overpriced, $200 normally. Now, are you talking about the original Longmorn 16 that's that price? Because here, when it first came out, which is about five years ago, it was $75 Canadian. And the last time I saw somebody selling it in the store, an old bottle, it was, the guy was asking like $275. Hmm. Because, guys, there is a new 16-year-old out by Longmore, and it's just it doesn't even hold a candle to the old one. And the old one came in a in a very simple bottle, very much like the shapes of the Brook Laddies. Had a leather neck and a leather ring on the bottom. Not a leather neck. It was actually a metal ring, right? Yeah, the new purple packaging. And it is overpriced. I think for that 16-year-old, it is overpriced, man. Yeah, well, the new, the old green box was a superior packaging. Because, I mean, come on, we have to admit, we are paying for the packaging too, right? We are. So, and you might as well, if you're going to pay for it, you better like it. I got, I got something over here right now. I am not happy with it all. It is absolutely uh, disappointing that you paid over a thousand dollars for a bottle and the package came with a warp cover it doesn't the, the lid doesn't shut right and so on right but i'll take care of that with the uh with the people that imported unfortunately those people live in another city and they favor the other city too right so a lot of times what we deal with with liking whiskey it, we get affected by the all little micro political stuff that goes on, right? 
well, I'm missing some comments. Like like me looking at electric poles. You smell what you're used to. What you're used to. You're used to electric electrical poles. I don't want to know why. And I love the cross chat. Whiskey shenanigans. What's that? What is what? Two, you've gone through two new Longhorns, one ten each. Wow! And I, I bought the only Longhorn I could buy at the time when I was out of town, and it was their Select or something. It wasn't even an aged one. So, KNL wines, if they deliver to you, have a big selection of independent bottles at a very good price. The exactly. Hydronic fluid. Oh, hydronic fluid. What's that smell like anyway? And I missed somebody's comment here about something they just ordered. Oh, Donner Press. You got some new bottles here. Uh, just ordered Indie. I don't even know. Ock Roast, Ock Roast 21, McDuff 21, and an old Putney 17. Those are nice. I think they're very good. I I have never had the Ock. Royusk, Osk, Ro I don't know how to say that. Somebody pronounce it for me. Uh, the old Pulteney 17 year old, but nice. And I'm glad you found one. Is it the old one? Obviously, I don't think they make a 17 year old one. So. Oh, guys, I do feel very, very fatigued and tired. And part of what the issue is is at work, I don't get left alone. It's like, I have a radio, sometimes two radios. Um, we are pushed through. We had two days off last week, and I passed out the first night and slept on my couch, which really kind of buggered up my lower back, although it's better now. Yeah, I'm tired. Too tired. i got to make some adjustments here. But this job, well, okay. First day in the job, there was literally an explosion. You can see it on my Instagram whiskey dot throttle that that picture you'd see if you go there is the furnace it's pit black as black can be smoke and flame shooting out of this thing no richie i'm not off for a long time now and you know what i'm missing right now and i just saw it pop up on my phone a buddy i haven't seen forever is in um he's at the cavill and master release Right, um, and I'm just too tired. I have done a couple things during this job to go do whiskey things, and I didn't even come home. I just drove straight to him after working all day. Off till Tuesday. That's nice. Does everybody here have Mon Monday to Friday eight to five jobs? I think in some ways I'd find that monotonous after a while, but I kind of wish I had it. You know, mm, it smells good though. Mm hmm. 25 year old. Mm. She's got some kick too. I think it's like 57, 48.7. Still strong. I don't know why it's getting to me now. I'm tired. Oh, just stop talking, Mike. Six thirty. It's exam to three thirty. Yeah, when you get a hold, when you <laughs> when you say good morning to me, it's it's four thirty. I passed out Thursday and missed two live streams. Yes, man, I can't. But well, I was at work. I missed uh, the Scotch Test Dummies farewell from Scotland type of deal with Aquavite. And uh, even when I'm at work, I can only half ass listen to it with my headphones on. Ah, uh, military. Yeah, those hours would be crazy. Depending on what you're getting sent to do or, or where you're at. Eric Gilbert. How you doing, boss? Hope you're doing well. Nice to see you. Um, what else have I got here, guys? I mean, I, I've got tons. Oh, you know what? I haven't. I didn't have a chance to. If anybody knows on Instagram, know, know your whiskey. He sent me, he brought down, we, we did our blind whiskey tasting. 
at Unwind's um, warehouse. They have a nice area in there, and they let us in, and we had the guys from the Park Whiskey Club. We had the regular, uh, we call our, kind of call it the Whiskey Heathen Blind Whiskey Tasting. It's Know Your Whiskey, and he makes his own little blends here, and he got me a sample of, come on, focus, of his own Heathen's, Heathen Blend. Um, I'm sh ooh, I don't know if he posted, well, he posted a picture his Instagram live will be gone and he breaks it down everything that he has in this blend right it's very nice it's very unique actually what oh Richie you asked some of the toughest questions what's my favorite whiskey going well this one right here so far and um, we've got uh, a couple things that I got that, that just came in from Scotland one is over here. It is Bequest. It is an exclusive. Let me grab this. This is an exclusive bottling, and we bought 245 of these barrels. Well, I didn't buy it. Let me get past the camera here, gentlemen. You're on six and then four. Well, okay, you can get used to that, right? As long as it's not switching from days to nights. A store pick bourbon. Well, this one here is called Bequest 1987 Single Grain. I get out of the camera's way. It's a single grain from Invergordon, and it is beautiful. They not only bought the cask, which was a hogshead, they also bought or the liquid in it. They not only bought the liquid and bottled it, they bought the barrel and it is being shipped to us here. And I believe it is given, being given to a new brewery to age some beer in. So 46 year old single grain whiskey. Am I dating this right? Need my calculator, gentlemen. My eyes are burning in my head here. Staring at the computer too long. What bottle in 2018? Yeah, 19. Sorry, 31 year old. Inver Gordon. What did I? Oh, I know where that is. That's uh, sitting right next to it, gentlemen. But I tell you something, this one really hit me well in Scotland and the other one which we also had in Scotland come on hold on is the 46 year old blended grain scotch whiskey and I did I should I should edit it and put it up I have an interview with Peter Mackay who was the one that gave us this beautiful it is beautiful this is both both from rare drams old Perth 46 year old blended single grain. It was wicked. Very, very beautiful stuff. Uh, this one, the best part is, is I have a bottle of this, but the first time I drank it, it came out of the barrel. Just something to think about, gentlemen. It came out of the barrel. So, what am I missing in the chat? When did you get the Donna Press? Blair, no whiskey shenanigans. Likes Bel Blair. I've never heard of that. No. I have mood. Am I, is it a good mood lighting? It's it's actually because it is getting dark now, and I am by um, a couple areas that let light in. Yes, forty six year old. Very wow. Um. Yeah. I know I have a screen mate, nine year old here. So, if anybody cares, local barley, nine year old. I know everybody loves it. it is. I love uh, Springbank, Campbelltown was my probably one of my high points of the trip to Scotland. Actually. 
Anyway, talking about a trip to Scotland, you guys have been following the, the Scotch Test Dummies? And Roy, man, man, I wish I had done that trip. Although, actually, my trip was pretty darn exclusive. I was very impressed. So, kind of a toss-up other than I didn't get to hang around with Roy. And you see how far out, man? I That guy is a class act with with the, the logos on a van. I don't even know it's his van because when he picked me up, he was in a car. So I don't even know if he went out and rented that thing or not, but it's still very, very classy, very a phenomenal collaboration. Uh, time for maybe another pour, another dram, gentlemen. Hmm. I'll, I'll tell you what, you guys pick. Time's running out here for me because I'm going to crash. I have 18-year-old and up. And I have batch seven, Lindronic. Oh, by the way, whiskey in the six tells me I say this wrong. Poor fella. I know it hurts him. Anyway, it is uh, cast strength, and it's not too bad. It's pretty good. Daniel, this live has some Scotch Gods present, does it? Who am I missing? You guys are all Scotch Gods. You guys are phenomenal. Everybody that's in this chat has been around for a long time, and I've had uh, private chats with you guys. You know who I'm really missing, Richie? Although I love all you guys, is Santa Cruz. I hope he's doing well. And and uh, Charlotte, the dog. I think we're going to do this one. What do you guys think? Cast strength? Because it's probably softened some because I opened this up. So I opened up, I brought three bottles to our blind bag tasting. And I gave them an option of what to open. We, and and, and, and I, I took some cards and I wrote one, two, and three on it. And they um, they picked... <laughs> Bat seven Glendronic. But they could have picked. Oh, what could they have picked? Now I'm gonna forget. Well, the one that they could have picked that they really bummed out on was this. This was a blind bag tasting. It is a 25-year-old canvas single grain. 100 percent sherry cask, I believe. Or finished in sherry. Where is it? Oak. Aged in oak. That's all it says here. Anyway, phenomenal. You guys might want to see the color. Hello, John Post. How you doing? The lighting is changing a bit, but look at that. That's dark, red, beautiful 25-year-old sherry finished or sherry aged canvas. That canvas is good, my friend. It is very good. Don't hesitate. A little pricey, but they're all pricey nowadays. I don't care what you're buying. So, cast strength. You like canvas? I've got a couple other canvases sitting in the back here. Anyway, guys, I'm, I can't believe, Richie, how good you are as a moderator. All the whoever Puff Daddy there was that was saying bad things to me about me. Which, man, I don't care. He can say all he wants. If I was really able to be the way I was and had to be at work, I don't think many of you would be viewers. Get sick and tired of it sometimes. Uh, what else did I get here? First punching. You may be right. Sherry. Um, cast number, bottle number. To only 238 bottles of this. I'd have to read it more, man. My, the light's getting dim in here, and I'm so old. There we go. Mm, lighter on the nose than I remember when I opened it. Which is good, though. I'm working on a refinery right now that 
don't smell it all the time but once in a while you'll come outside and you get the that smell of um well they make styrene there right? that and they sell it all over the place but it is something else whiskey stinerson welcome in thank you very much for joining oh this is a potent little very uh strong alcohol very medicinal on the nose what are you thinking about mike mm, my name is mike it rhymes with spike i don't know anyway santa where have you been we just talking about you thanks for checking in do i find myself saving my big sherry bottles for the cooler months or do they enjoy them in the you know, I don't really save my whiskeys for specific times, any of them. The, the, I mean, it would depend on the time of day, Donner. Um, I've never thought of sherry for cooler months or warmer months. For example, you know, a lot of people say it's, you know, it's really cold outside. It's a good time to have a peated whiskey. And that may be true, but how about taking a peated smoky whiskey you enjoy in the summertime to the beach where there's a fire going on and enjoying it there what what would be wrong with that right i mean it, it kind of matches the salt of the sea if you're by a sea having a fire on the beach um you know and the smoky fire all that type of stuff so it can work it's a matter of how we think of it we I, I think we uh we expect too much from our whiskey maybe we put um too many labels on it i tend to lean toward an awful lot of times uh virgin oak even with the scotches mm. That's good, but it needs water. Well, I don't have any here. But, oh, geez. As long as a bat right in front of me. That is young fur. I have to look it up and see what that is in there. But man, is that ever hot? That one you could add quite a bit of water to and still enjoy it. Mm. It's got a lingering, kind of like a rye ish finish to it here. Peated whiskey with smoky bacon. Now, Professor Bourbon, there you go. You drink your sherry bombs around the holidays. Any particular reason why? And I'm going to have a guy on who is kind of more of a wine guy. He's not a sommelier. He's not, you know, he's very low-key, not pretentious. We're going to enjoy a very good whiskey, and then we're going to talk about <clears throat> the wine because he does a lot of wine pre presentations as well as whiskey. And it's going to be, you know, kind of ballsy, kind of maybe not as politically correct. I'm going to have him on. He's a good guy. I bust his balls a lot because, you know, that's what we do. Kind of give each other jabs. But I think you guys will enjoy a little bit of an education on wine finishes, perhaps. Which, how many people are, oh, Jason Fisk, yeah, you're already in. Am I missing anybody? Do I need to pop up my uh, participant chat? Bourbon, Professor Donner, Pass, Whiskey, Eric Gilbert, George Kaplan. Glad to see you're still here, George. Jason Fisk, John Post, Rose Chun, Richie Z, Santa Cruz, and Mash and Drum, Whiskey Shenanigans, Whiskey Snearson. And one more donkey named Throttle. Ah, the flavors remind you of holidays, Christmas cake, and such. Okay. Very good. Pete with cask ale and French blue cheese. Eric, that's a very interesting combo. I've been working on a few things here, guys. One, one with a, a local restaurant around here. That during the week has slower weeks, maybe doing some tastings. Rabbit and Red Reviews. Good evening. Thanks for coming in. 
Yes, George, I will need to call it a night soon. Thank you very much for coming in. Peter White, how you doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm going to finish this drama and I got to go to bed, right? No, it's not Eric Waite. No, kind of the opposite of Eric Waite. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to look at my double chin since a uh, little puff, whatever his name is, said something. Yeah, why wouldn't you drink Pete all year round, right? It's good stuff. I'm not a big Pete fan, anyway. I think that it's gotten a little, gone a little far because of Pete's. Um, it's just over propaganda. Pete, Pete, the most Pete, this and that. I like Pete, but just not for Pete's sake. I've repeated that many, many times. Now, somebody asked me earlier about Cambridge. Uh, single grain Cameron Bridge, yes. Uh, do I have any? Yes, Richie, I may. I've, I've had some. Do I have any? I cannot remember. Um, hmm. Oh, excuse me, gentlemen. I apologize for that. Let me take a look here, guys. Just seeing. Because I don't want to have to turn my back on you and dig around and behind me. I do have a Cameron Bridge. And it has not been that long ago. It is a 21-year-old. It's very reasonably priced for $120. It is a single grain scotch, and it is one of 375 bottles, and it was bourbon cast matured. Does that answer your question, Mr. Richie Z? Getting a little too much radio voice going on there. Santa, please tell us how Charlotte is doing. Your lovely pooch. Whiskey shenanigans. Have a good sleep if you haven't already left. Wow, man, you're not so warm. Eric, what is so warm? I might make me sleep on the couch if I've been drinking peated drams. Really? That is wrong. <laughs> Why can't she sleep on the couch while you drink peated drams in bed? What is my favorite peated malt? I don't have a favorite. I don't think. If I did, it would probably change. You have a Lagavulin, like is it? Mm. If you're talking about standard releases, like regular releases, I guess that would be that would be up there. Oh, you're sick. So what do you guys like? Just tr change being sick? Thank you, Richie. I'm trying, buddy. Thank you for encouraging me. Breckenridge 105 proof. Not bad at all. What is Breckenridge? Like what? Is it bourbon? Why don't I, I, I know the name, but oh nice one, John. Elijah Craig barrel proof. I have one. It was a very nice gift from somebody that I've probably offended over the last few months. But we'll try to make it up to him. I'm very interested in Port Charlotte for a Pete the milder ones and people report that other flavors come through and aren't run over by the peat. Anyone have an opinion on that? Hmm. Well, guys, does anyone have an opinion on that? I like Port Charlotte. I do not think that they have some heavily peated Port Charlottes, but they have some Port Charlottes that are just nicely peated. I like Le Chig. Um the their peated stuff is seems to be balanced. Gordon McPhail cast strength Ardmore. I believe that I have seen that bottle somewhere. I do not believe I purchased it though. I believe I was tasting it. Had a tasting. I'm you're wrong about the peat, Daniel. So wrong. What am I wrong about? 
What did I say? Which part am I wrong about? And am I just wrong or you disagree with my opinion? Come on, tell me. You're wrong about the peak. What is Rabbit having? Did I miss it? Man, some of this chat's going too fast. I imagine if I had people watching like they do on some of these bigger channels where it's 100 or 200, you'd never be able to keep up. Just returned from seeing the Who. Oh, that would have been awesome for sure, Rabbit. And you're pouring a Knob Creek barrel to Nightcap. That is a nice Nightcap. Lag 16, yes. The J10 is really good. It is. I, I have to agree with it, right? And I like the spring bank. I like the regular spring bank. I mean, the other ones are very expensive, so that's another story. Chris, how you doing, man? How's the music? Peter White, have not opened it yet, but that 18 is great. I actually have a 21-year-old and an 18-year-old spring bank sample somewhere from when I interviewed Roman Curry from Springbank. So Tuesday, if I get my act together, I will be interviewing somebody that I have met on a couple occasions and hopefully getting him to sign a very special bottle. I am doing fairly well, my friend, working too many hours, although we need to complain about the money. No, we take the money and when the job's done, you then relax. You were saying that Pete is overrated. Oh, I don't mean that. Hmm. Yeah, I should rephrase that. Why is the whiskey room dark? Because when I started, the dome had light coming through it, and so did my window have light coming through it. Now it hasn't, and I've been sitting here because it is now past my bedtime at 9.42. <laughs> You guys can still see me. It's kind of nice. I like to ever mention that it was mood lighting. It kind of just changed on its own. And it's a good way to say good night when it's time to, right? And just say, like, oh, oh, sorry, guys. Something wrong with my camera. I can't see anymore. So I don't like Pete just for Pete's sake is what I was trying to say, Eric. I think that there are probably some phenomenal Pete's out there. And the companies are doing it for the very fact that they enjoy putting peat in it, right? Although one of my favorite things was when, when in Scotland, when they're like, you know, back in the day, peat was not a big deal. Matter of fact, there was one or two islands we were told about that just got electricity. And peat was used all the time for heating homes, cooking dinners. It was just, that's the resource they had. It wasn't because it was there to make whiskey. I do enjoy the bourbon cask Highlander. Underrated in my opinion. Yes, I think you are right there. You never compl I complain about the money. Money has corrupted me, gentlemen. What are you going to do? If we had less stuff and needed less money, then we would have more time. We wouldn't have to buy whiskey. Maybe we'd have more time to make our own. Are you leaving me, Richie? Eco terrorists crack down on them. <laughs> yeah. You know, I work in an industry where the environmentalists are attacking us all the time. Not attacking us, I mean, genuine concerns. Oops. Uh, did I grab the boom to that? No, I didn't. Oh, you're asking Peter, Jason. Hmm. Knob Creek single barrel store pick from one of you. Really? I don't often like wine and beyond store picks. And anybody in the U.S., wine and beyond is the equivalent to total wine. A matter of fact, somewhere along the lines, corporately, they are the same company. Right. Pete is like hot sauce. I mean, <laughs> it makes subpar tasty. You know, that could be true. 
not everybody likes the smoke, right? I mean, I like I like smoky things. I like sitting by a fire. I'm looking at my fire pit right now. Um, I like smoked meat. I like smoked cheese. Sometimes it can be overpowering, but, you know, balance. It's all about balance. Just like the scrumptious lolly. <laughs> scrumptious lolly, old-fashioned flavored. I wonder if I could take this to work and not get in trouble. I should try that. I should actually find out from uh, the Whiskey Bells where they got this from. I think their address is on here. Yep. I don't know what's in it, but it's got to be out of boy. No, you're not. You're not going anywhere, Richie. Okay, I thought you were just being nice and polite to everybody. Oh, yes. The, well, you know what I'm missing tonight, gentlemen, is Cavalin is here. Mark from Whiskey Whistle flew all the way to Calgary to see the guy yesterday, or maybe it's today, and I could have gone today, but I'm just too tired, and if it wasn't for Richie Z encouraging me and prompting me to come on, do a live, do a live, I probably would be in bed already, but um, yeah, I feel a little bummed that I'm missing the Cavill and uh, Ian Chang is here, and it would be nice to be able to see that. Why am I getting notifications? Sorry about that, guys. But the guys from Chateau Louis, they're pretty good. Even the younger guys, you know, they, they, um, they get to know their stuff. They do a good job there. Way better than some liquor stores you walk into and people are like, Oh, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's whiskey, you know. Ask somebody what scotch is. Uh, I don't know. Isn't it on Tuesday in Edmonton? No, somebody's there right now. My, maybe. No, Tuesday is Glenn Farkless. Yeah. Is there a Maker's Mark? I don't think there's a Maker's Mark one. I, it's so hard for me to say things because I live out here and I really don't want to rock the boat, Richie, but the gentleman that oftentimes does the store picks for Wine and Beyond, I don't think he actually goes there and tastes it. He just says, yeah, we'll take that barrel, send us up. How cheap is it? But that's just my opinion. All whiskey should be at least 46. Actually, good point, Eric. Um, maybe we're spoiled with having a high test whiskey and so forth, but I think we should have a choice to dilute it ourselves. I agree. Yeah. Glenn Farkless. Night. Why don't you go to the Glenn Farkless? I'll see you there. I've already got tickets. I asked how long once and they <laughs> at the liquor at the liquor store most? That would be hilarious. Yeah. They're very fussy, Cavalon, and I really kind of wish I'd get gone because I'd like to know more. They will order a thousand barrels or return like nine hundred of them. Now that guy that was in charge of that, the story is, is is no longer with them. But um, matter of fact, he may have even worked for a while at the Victoria Caledonian Distillery here in Canada on. Vancouver Island. Oh, is is oh man, I gotta go, man. Barry White. Beer tubes, Barry White. I love that guy, man. I like watching those guys chat. And they don't give a crap if how many people are watching or not watching. They just laid back, talk about beer and everything else that comes up. They're a good guy. Thanks for telling me, Eric. I'll have to pop in while I get into bed and at least say hello to him. I bug him all the time about being very white. Or very white. Not very white. You guys check that guy out. He was on, he's been on, uh, whose channel was it there, Eric? Uh, Swami's, right? I am on night shift, or I would, yes. I am so fortunate I'm not on night shift for this long a period. Matter of fact, I hopefully have been in this company and around long enough that I can just say no to night shifts. Although last year, I think you guys saw me doing night shifts in Moose Jaw. 
for a period of time. I hated it. Who would like it? I mean, come on, man. Uh, I got it. Go get it. You want me to go get it? Why would I go? I never read your last part of your sentence. Rod, yes, Rod J. Beer Reviews. Yes. Yep. Anyway, gentlemen, I'm not really always running out of words. I can ramble on about stuff. I don't know if I have anything else to show you. I do have this here, which I did interview Connell, who is from Adelphi, one of the distilleries I went. This is their new make spirit. If you get a chance to see the Art of Merchant new make spirit, give it a shot. This is the 2017. They are up to 2018. But they have some phenomenal stuff coming out. Old Moose Knuckle. Yeah, I like Moose Jaw, to tell you the honest truth. Yeah, call in sick, man. I mean, you can afford to do it. Anyway, gentlemen, really appreciate you talking to me. Thank you very much, Richie. I am going to say good night. I'm going to say a quick hello to Rod J. Beer Views because he's live right now with his crew. And we will get back. Pay attention for Tuesday. I will be interviewing, hopefully, if it all works out, because you know how things happen, um, George S. Grant. If you know who I mean. So... He and I have met a couple times. Hopefully, he will send sign my bottle um, of family cask. And we'll get to hear an interesting story or two before he goes to do the tasting. So, I kind of held on to that to the very end. Now, you guys know. Thank you very much, everybody. Please be safe. Take care of yourselves and those you love. Thank you very much, Donner Press. Appreciate it, you guys. The Golden Horseshoe. Cheers.